Oi a todos, é, aqui o Billy, é, foi um prazer hoje apresentar a minha amiga, né, chama Iris, é, que também é chinesa, e nós falamos é, hoje alguns assuntos sobre entre dois países e é, de, de viver em diferentes culturas e, e também aprendizagem de idiomas, é, e como, como eu, ela também fala vários idiomas e já viveu em muitos lugares, e nós uh, queremos uh, te dar algumas uh, nossas uh, opiniões sobre uh, diferentes uh, lugares e uh, culturas que a gente vivia. Ok, uh, so, it, uh, então é muito prazer uh, uh, meu uh, de poder convidar você hoje a uh, falar um pouco uh, sobre vários assuntos e primeiro... Uh, eu queria perguntar de onde você é e onde você cresceu e onde você está agora. Uh, olá a todos. Okay. Se ela fala uh, bastante bem espanhol, mas português não tanto. Pois, pues muitas gracias por ter me e por esta oportunidade. É um prazer estar aqui. Pois, pues vou falar em inglês um pouquinho e vou apresentar-me um pouquinho, vale? Entonces, mm -hmm. um, well, my name is Iris, and like Billy said, uh, I am Chinese. I um, grew up in China until I was about 10 years old, and then I moved to Canada with my family. And I've been living in Canada ever since, but I've also spent time living uh, in Spain for a while. Okay, uh, very nice. Yeah, so as I, as I, as uh, we I said at the beginning too, we're gonna switch the language back and forth. But as we are both Chinese, kind of weird the beginning, uh, just speaking a third or fourth language. You know, <laughs> yeah. sometimes we will switch around. So uh, anyway, uh, how, for how long are you living in Canada, by the way? In Canada, I would say more than so between um, 10 years and 20 years. I'm kind of dating okay. myself here. <laughs> okay, that's good. So do you consider like an English a first town or a first a first language or Chinese? I'd say both because I've always um, grew, grew, growing up. I've always, you know, been able to speak both at a native language, native level. So mm -hmm. I'd say that I wouldn't say one is better than the other, but I always mm -hmm. say that. Both are, are equally uh, my native languages. Very cool, yeah. So, um, what would you do for a living now? Are you also doing something related with languages, or what do you do? Oh, so I do have a side gig as an okay. ITALK teacher teaching languages, right. just like nice. you, Billy. And that's okay, actually yeah. how I met, right? So, it's a very interesting story. But yeah. my main job right now is working in uh, health economics okay. as a consultant. So, uh, in what in what city are you in Canada right now, particularly? Yeah, right now I live in Toronto. Toronto, okay, cool. Wow, oh, nice. Okay, good. Okay. Um, next. Uh, um, so, uh, you said that you lived in Spain too. Like, how does that impact you in a way that uh, since you were grew up in both China and, and Canada, like the North American Asia? So, what does that uh, experience? Uh, uh, well, how was that experience for you in, in, in Spain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually living in Spain was like opening up a Pandora's box for me. You know, oh, nice. growing up, um, being Chinese, living in Canada, I was only exposed to pretty much two cultures. Yeah. And going to Spain kind of exposed me to a third culture, <clears throat> which mm -hmm. surprisingly I was very, um, very drawn to and I was very uh, attracted to it. And I think that going to Spain kind of changed me for a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's the way I think right now or whether that's the way I behave. Because, you know, Spanish people are very affectionate. Yeah. But whereas, you know, we Chinese, we come up from a culture where affection is not really shown. True. And, and in North America as well, right, people are not that warm as they are <clears throat> in Spain, for yeah. example. Yeah. So I think that being in Spain not only has taught me a language, but also has added more... I guess flavors or colors to my mm -hmm. uh, to my life and to my experiences. So, but there's also you know disadvantages to to that as well. I'm I'm sure you know being especially you being in so many countries is mm -hmm. that you kind of struggle with the identity crisis. I see, I see. So uh, was it uh, was it was Spanish difficult for you to learn, or like, well, you just uh, spoke a little bit in Spanish too? I, f I see that you have a really good accent and everything. How was that? You know, how 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 could you improve your language so fast? <laughs> Thank you. Well, 
For me, I I had a really really strong desire to learn Spanish when I was mm. there. So I I first immersed myself in a very intense language learning course that's provided okay. by the government. So the the oh, quality wow. of the classes were really good, mm -hmm. and also I just kind of cut off English. I kind of I cut off Chinese as well. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. set my laptop and my phone all to Spanish, and I would only watch Spanish uh, video videos, and I would only listen to Spanish podcast. And when people nice. People try to speak English to me because back then my Spanish was really poor. I, I know they come from a good intention of helping me to understand me better by speaking English. I would just be like, no, no, no English. I, I need to pick up, pe keep on practicing my Spanish with you. <laughs> I see, I see. Oh, that's good. So what you do is like you literally try to immerse yourself in the culture and languages, exactly. and which is the best way of learning languages, I would say. And I'm, I'm doing basically the same thing where I'm now I'm in Italy. So it's the same for me. In the beginning, it was hard, and gradually, you you know, you kind of uh, force yourself to speak it and everything. And people see your effort that they want to help you and you for improve. Sure. Yeah, you know? for sure. And I think what's uh, really good about Spain and I believe Brazil as well is that once you start speaking the language that they speak, people are become instantly more friendlier. Not that they're not friendly to begin with, but they're very willing to help you. They're very you know quick to open up to you. Yeah, so I think that so, was something found very to be very nice. Yeah. Uh, one curiosity I want to ask, like when you speak Spanish and, you know, as being an Asian, you know, I, I speak also I speak some Western languages, too. I you know being uh, Asian. Uh, what, what are people's reaction when you speak Spanish and how people react? I mean, do we do they think like do they think like maybe you are Spanish or something super <laughs> exotic? I don't know, like how, how people react. I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Um, I definitely got a lot of interesting responses. OK. Um, I remember um, there's once I was in Peru, I was, you know, um, talking with a tour agency about my tour. I was speaking in Spanish and then uh, sitting across from me was actually a Brazilian guy. And then after I, st I uh, finished my call, he was like, are you from Latin America? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 because of that. Yeah. I have to be Chinese, but then I have to, every time I tell people, you know, every time white people ask me why I speak Spanish, I have to go into the whole story of like, no, right, I'm right, Chinese, right. you know, I, I speak Spanish because I lived in Spain, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see, I see. Wow, that's that's really, really awesome. Yeah. So, uh, definitely, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know many more languages and everything. We can jump into a little more of a culture aspect of it. Like, do you, uh, do you prefer, do you like, uh, do you think, uh, have the experience of living in different cultures and, and countries um, shift your opinion quite a lot? Uh, how does it, how does it like comparing to someone who only got brought out in one culture? What do you think on that? Yeah, for, for sure. It's, um, like I said, it's a, it's a Pandora's box, right? So um, yeah. I think it really opened up my mind and, you know, <clears throat> broaden my horizons. So before moving to Spain, I was pretty much um, set on a certain path of how I was going to live my life, mm -hmm. especially driven by the, you know, the uh, North American capitalist culture, as well as, sure. you know, Chinese culture of stability. I right. was pretty sure that, you know, after after I finished school, I was going to go on a path that's very predictable that, yeah. you know, I would just, you know, climb the corporate ladder, you know, start a family very soon and kind of like, quote unquote, settle down. Right. True. And then, yeah. and then I, and I thought of that at the age of 23, 24, which now I think about is kind of ridiculous because 23, 24 is such a young age. Yeah. But then once I moved, like, after I moved to Spain, um, I realized that there's actually so many different ways to live life and there's no right or wrong way. Which, you know, the way I thought that I was going to live was the only way or the right way. But after moving to Spain, I realized that that's not the case. You know, people have such diverse experiences and such diverse lifestyles that you don't have to live in a certain way, that, you know, that your, your, um, your peers do. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, um, you can have your own path and you can have your own way. And you know who's the who's other people to say that that's not the that's not the way or that this is the way you should be living. Yeah, that's great. That's well, very well said because, like as you said, you know, Chinese people traditionally, you know, we have this uh, thinking of uh, just being being stable and settle down and everything. And uh, it's great that you went to Spain and when you see, you know, people of different cultures and they kind of have a different kind of way of thinking. That mm -hmm. kind of impact you a lot. Well, you don't necessarily have to change yourself or, mm -hmm. or anything, but it definitely open your mind and make you 
uh, thinking more options and everything. Yeah, so that's really good. And I think that in addition to that, um, I think that in 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 Europe, people generally have a better, you know, sense of how they want to live their life and more of a relaxed way of how they want yeah. to live their life. Although and, making less money, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you know, money doesn't doesn't buy you everything, right? True, 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 true. So, and also, yeah. I think that um, I think people don't really need to prove themselves as much. Exactly. In, in the Chinese 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 culture, we always have to like prove to our parents, prove to our peers of how much we're worth. In, in North America as well, the, with the corporate mm-hmm. culture being so ingrained in our brains, it's like I have to show them, you know, what how far I've come through. Yeah, but I think uh, I think that. Elsewhere in the world, people are, are a little bit less concerned about that. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, yeah. 然后呃呃，突然我应该讲一点中文，因为你也是北方人，对不对 ？You're from northern part of China. I'm me too. Yeah, 我也是北方人。所以呃，北方人可能就是家庭观念比较重，所以可能这个原因也导致北方人就是在国外这个群体也比较小。可能少一点，就是来南方人来的最早嘛，去出去出出国出去外国，对不对？加拿大也是，对不对？就是最早来的都是港、香港，就是广东人。然后福建，然后广东都是对对对就是南对，都是南方人嘛，就是比较做生意啊和创业那种的。但是北方人嘛，就是像你说的一样，就是我们的观念比较传统吧。尤其是我是山东人嘛，尤其是山东人，他们那个官僚系统很那个怪概念非常非常的强。官僚系统是什么？我我自己都不太了解。官僚系就是要做公务员呐、啊。嗯<笑>、uh, ，OK。当公务员呐、啊，然后做那个进那个体制内啊，做一些就是政府的那些工作，他们就是以为那就是铁饭碗了嘛。嗯、所以就是你是你只要是大学毕业以后考了公务员，然后你结婚生孩子，你这一生差不多就是就就是成功了。<笑>对,对,对,对在那个山东父母的眼里，就是你这一辈子就该那么那么走。如果你要偏离这个轨道的话，你就是另类，你就是不对，你就是不孝。<笑>对对对对对，所以就是说你你就是你你已经移民来加拿大挺久了，你父母也是移民过来的，对不对？所以但是他们来加拿大这么多年，你觉得他们有一些这些本质上的改变，还是和在中国的时候这些观念一样的？嗯嗯，我觉得。虽虽然有一点改变吧，但是他们因为毕竟我父母来加拿大的时候，他们都是已经三四十岁了嘛，嗯嗯嗯，就他们的那个思想啊，已经非常根深蒂固了。所以呢，虽然他们就是没有说一定要我怎么怎么样，但是他们还是会就是希望我走某某某条路，希望我会变成一个什么什么样的人，嗯、然后。都会加上一句话说：“哎呀，我们这都是为你好呀。<笑>”是是是，我我我理解我理解，我觉得大部分中国的父母是这样，所以这是为什么，呃，如果很多看这个这这部视频的人，就是可能西方人呢、啊，或者怎么样，他们可能对中国感觉就是中国人都工作很努力，一些原因，嗯、呃，就是因为呃，我们必须被父母逼迫，必须这样做，我们没有那么多自由的选择，所以。呃，但是我觉得我算是个人来说比较幸运，我我父母其实他们不算是特别传统的中国人，就是他们觉得，呃，就是属于放养，我就可以想学什么学什么吧。但是我觉得中国的传统这些想法也有好处，因为以前中国比较穷嘛，我觉得可能，所以就是说如果没有好工作，就是没有铁饭碗，你就不能有一个，呃，很好的生活。所以我觉得中国的父母很现实。就是这个方面，没错没错。而且如果从一个大体环境上考虑的话，嗯、其实西方还是以个人主个人主义的那个为体系嘛。然后中国亚、嗯、东亚是为那个群体主义。如果你不合群，其实就是你会很难过。但是如果你在东方、嗯、西方的话，他们其实是呃支持，并且就是非常那个非常呃就是。喜欢这种就是个人主题，就是你必须要去。从小嘛，老师就会在在西方，老师就会教你说，你一定就是给大家展示你的不同。但是呢，如果你在东方或者在中国说你要展示你的不同，你就是个另类，对吧？你不合群。对对对对对。所以现在的话，你还经常回国吗？就是在国内，你还有以前的朋友联系吗？或者你们还有这些有没有这些文化冲突、啊？你你可能会感觉得到。<笑>有的有的，其实呃。除了父母外，其实亲戚们都在中国嘛。嗯，我每次回去的话，他们其实因为因为我的那个我是山东嘛，他毕竟山东济南嘛，他毕竟不是一个像北京、嗯、北上广那样那个种一线大城市，对对所以啊、嗯，尤其是在山东，所以在济南的在济南的家人呢，济南的朋友啊，他们的思想有时候就是跟我就是真的不是非常的一致吧。嗯嗯嗯。嗯
，嗯，就比如说最典型的时候，就是嗯，要结婚了，男生必须有车有房。啊、哦，对对，还有彩礼，对不对？就是中国讲究的那些东西，对，对对门当户对这些，我觉得在西方都是说。呃，并不比这个概念比较模糊，可能一般也会就是说选比较好的，但是没有这么传统意义上了，门当户对。嗯，对啊，对啊，就是我还记得有一次我跟我朋友说，呃，他就说好像我们聊到关于这个结婚的话题，我说，呃，其实如果我结婚的话，我不一定需要男方有车有房，我们可以一起租房子呀，很多人都那么、嗯、都都那么做的呀。然后他当时就惊呆了。嗯<笑>嗯，绝对不可能的，他他绝对不找一个没有车、嗯、没有房的男人去娶她。所以所以所以对你来说，你觉得你因为在西方很多年，你又是中国人，有西方化的，所以呃，但是也有同时有中国的这些影响，肯定呃，所以你如果这样来想要找配偶，呃，这样你你就是觉得中国人更倾向呢，还是你觉得呃西方人或者是像你一样的这种中西合璧的，<笑>你有想过吗？哇，我其实其实这个想过，然后呃，以前的以前也有过这些经历嘛。但是我觉得其实最重要的还是这个人，嗯、是吧、嗯？这个人也可能就是有同时有中西方的背景，也可能第三国的背景哈。但是这个人如果他这个思想那个方面他不是很开放，但是那跟他过去的经历，在多国国家生活的经历，那有什么关系呢？是吧是是是是？但是如果也可能一个人他就是只在一个地方，呃，生活过。但是他的思想非常开放，他非常很，他很愿意的就去多国国家旅游啊，或者去结交别的朋友啊，别的国家的朋友啊，或者去了解别的国家的文化呀、啊。那他的思想其实是非常开放的。那我觉得还是要看分人了，就是不能就是。I see， 给给给给给某个群某个群体吧贴标签儿。<笑>对对对对，当然你说的对 ，Yeah， Okay， Holds good. You know,、uh, is you know we you you it's 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 strange like、uh, two Chinese people speaking in different languages, but it's great when you you, you we call also speak very good、uh, Chinese. We can talk in a, a、yes. lot of lot of. That's our advantage. Yeah, I see. It. Yeah, that's something like we think like also that's something、uh, similar similar about us. Like you know, we, we're all like, came from a similar background as a, as a country and also lived abroad and stuff. And all we're all those people who are very open to different cultures and languages and everything. So it's、mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a coincidence. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah,、mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. and、uh, yeah. So the reason why also like we we have some connections also because、uh, you wanted to travel to Brazil and you know,、uh, was a career.、Uh, Então eu eu mudar um pouco para português, você pode responder em espanhol, quiser,、uh, para público brasileiro também,、uh, para saber、uh, por que você um estrangeiro、uh, queria visitar o Brasil. Qual é a, as coisas que mais、uh, atraente para você、uh, sobre o Brasil? Sim, sim, sim. Pois, a verdade é que originalmente <laughs> Brasil no estaba en mi plan, o sea quería ir a Argentina originalmente. Es、okay. que te, nuestra empresa en donde trabajo tenemos una una regla que dice que puedes trabajar en en distancia a la distancia en、mm-hmm. en los países.、Ah, eso es un sueño de muchas personas que <laughs> pueden trabajar a、uh, uh, distancia, ¿no? Sí. Sí,、okay. sí, sí. Entonces al al principio envié una solicitud a mi empresa. para dejarme trabajar en Argentina, pero ellos dicen que pues no se puede trabajar en Argentina porque hay algunos riesgos en el país. Sí. Entonces digo pues vale, no pasa nada, voy a cambiar a otro país y、sí. pues no quería、um, un país tan tan lejos porque tenemos、uh-huh. todavía tenemos que trabajar en el mismo horario, ¿no? Sí, Entonces, sí, sí. No me queda muchas、eh, op-、um, opciones. Mm-hmm. Por eso、um, tengo que elegir algunos países、eh, dentro de América Sur o América Central.、Okay. Y pensaba que pues si voy a pasar como tres meses en un país quería que el país sea un país grande.、Okay. Y por eso elegir Brasil. <laughs> y en ese momento. Entonces no es no no es no es así el plan uh, plan uh, original entonces es、eh, sobrado Brasil es sobrado. <laughs> <laughs> sí, pero sabes, el la mejor cosa、eh, pasa cuando no está en el plan, ¿no? <laughs> es eso, es eso, verdad. A veces en chinés, en chifala, sabemos más, yendo feo, ¿no? Es eso, es eso. Es 
no venga por no venga por bien eh, no, no sé si en español tiene ten también esa 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 ditado no no sé cómo que era mas no lembro direito mas en español también tiene esa 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 palabra así ¿no? okay, eh, a, a la misma vez este año cuando uh, viajaba uh -huh. eh, conocía a muchas uh, a mucha gente de Brasil eh, ellos son muy muy amables muy muy majos y así que somos amigos no así sí. que pues sí tengo con um, tengo conocidos en Brasil entonces por ah. otra es una otra razón que ah, bueno, porque usted es... también tiene bastante amigos conocido amigos brasileños también sí. usted comienza a tener esa vontade sí. né de visitar a, a Brasil sí es un gran país claro como yo viví también Uh, posso te dar algumas dicas, claro, claro. E, pues, então... É, é como uma, um conhecido meu, não? <risos> porque, porque eres quase um brasileiro também, não? <risos> ah, eu, eu não sei, de, de, porque minha esposa é brasileira, né? E isso conta muito, porque eu falo uh, português todo dia. Sim. E essa também é outra uh, razão que eu comecei esse canal... Uh, de, uh, de, de falando a maioria em português para os brasileiros saber um pouco mais sobre a China, sobre culturas diferentes e entrevistando um pessoal muito interessante e, e como você, né? Como hoje. Sim. Sim. E, então, a última pergunta seria o que você pensa sobre o Brasil antes de visitar? O qual Quais são as imagens na sua cabeça? Uh, Tipo, não sei, samba, Rio de Janeiro, <risos> presidentor, futebol, não sei, qual, qual são as coisas Mas que sim. você pensa? Sim, sim. Você pensa assim ou você pensa um pouco diferente? Sim, pois... É, ah, que... Você já foi, já foi, já foi, já viajou para outros países da América Latina, né? Então, talvez, é, não, 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 não deve pensar como um chinês na China que nunca foi, né? Talvez é, muda um pouco, eu não sei. Sí, pues la gente me dice que Brasil es un poco peligroso. Sí, es verdad. Entonces me, me imagino que no hay muchas turistas de China mm. que, que va, vivan en Brasil, ¿no? Eso, yo, yo, yo confirmo que es verdad. Pero pues yo eh, viajé a India. Y, India, uh, se fui para India, wow. Okay. En, yo nunca... en México también, o, o sea, los países no tan tan seguros. Entonces sí. para mí la seguridad no es una no es un tema muy muy pues muy muy importante, pero sí también es, es importante, pero, pero esto no me importa tanto. Sí. Okay. Pues sí. la cultura brasileña me atrae mucho. Porque dicen que los brasileños son muy, muy amables, muy majos y muy cariñosos y siempre te, te, te tocan, te abrazan uh -huh. y te besan, ¿no? Sí. Y eso, eso me, me, me gusta mucho. Sobre todo, uh -huh. como me he dicho, te he dicho que en la cultura china y la cultura uh -huh. canadiense somos más fríos. Mm, ok, vos sí. esa uh, afección de las personas, ¿eh? sí. más, uh, más uh, calorosos, ¿eh? Sí. Uh, sí. Creo que todos en América Latina, uh, ¿Sí? las personas son más o menos así, sí. Pero sí, Brasil, sí. puedo decir que ainda es un poco diferente, ¿eh? Uh, com, porque los idiomas son diferentes, entonces, diferente sí, con sí. español hablantes, Uh, eu não sei como falar, é um jeito um pouco diferente. Você vai, quando você vai para o Brasil, você vai sentir. <risos> <risos> ok, ok, muito bem. É praticamente isso. Uh, uh, não sei, você quer falar algumas outros assuntos? Assim, não uh, podemos uh, encerrar a nossa uh, entrevista de hoje, né? Sobre, sobre você um pouco, né? Claro que vivia somos jovens ainda mas vivia tanto tanto lugares e já vi, já visitei tantos países conheci tanta gente uhum. uh, e num, em uma curta entrevista claro que não podemos mostrar todos uh, mas é claro que em 20 e poucos minutos a gente falou em quatro quatro idiomas Uh, sim, sim, então, uma coisa sim sim e, e é muito muito eu acho que você é muito inteligente que uh, como você só fala uh, espanhol você já entende bem em português e consegue uh, pegar uma entrevista em português também isso é muito impressionante parabéns 
sí, pero tú hablas más idiomas. No, obrigado, obrigado. Tengo que mirarla, tengo que mirarla, tengo que mirarla. Portugués, español. Sé que sé que hablas español perfectamente. Tengo que tengo que mirarla. Y además francés, ¿no? En francés. Sí, sí, sí. Más como los chineses hablan, humilde, humilde es muy importante. Então, é, quando, quando a pessoa elogia, elogia a gente, eu, nós chineses geralmente não fala que, não assume que, é, que nós somos bons, igual como você fala. Então, é, é, isso é, faz parte da nossa cultura também, sim. Mas é muito bom, muito bom. É, muito obrigado, Iris. É, para oh, Iris, ele, pois é. Iris, sim, sim, sim. Não, Iris, sim. Para aceitar oh, essa... Sim, whatever you want, yeah, it's like, it, you're like, a, you're like a, a global citizen, you know, like, you, you switch to English, I speak everything, yeah. and you live in many places, you know, it's it really, really, really courageous to, to, to do all these kind of things, you know, like, it's I not easy. You're, you're, too, you're too humble, Billy, your, your experiences have definitely... Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I'm saying the reason why, I feel like uh, I, I haven't met any Chinese like you or me, like, to be having this, uh, this kind of open mind and, and travel and living in different places, The reason why is I feel like we are really connected in many ways is because we had a similar experience. You know, this is this is a this is something really really cool. Yeah. I would say you know um, I think more and more um, Chinese people are getting out there and traveling, but mm -hmm. I think that was us uh, a little bit different is that we were immersed in another culture, in True. a third culture, a fourth culture, yeah, and we yeah, yeah. were able to enjoy that culture and pick up exactly. Aspects. Yeah, which is now ingrained into our behavior and in our perspectives. Definitely, so I think that is something that's very special. It's not. I think that um, you know, not everyone has the opportunity to to do that. So I'm very thankful for for the experiences that I had. Yeah, same. I'm feeling. I'm also feeling very blessed for what we what we done and what we experienced. You know, so we pretty much lived in life of many people. Like you know, you that's live true. like yeah. This is something I would I would I would say make it as an analogy, but um. Really, really mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so thank you again, Iris or Iris, <laughs> for the for the for the for the time and then uh, showing all the people uh, how it's like as an Asian, you know, Chinese and growing up in different cultures and always think about culture backgrounds and stuff and also languages. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. I, it's the, one of the only rare episodes I use English <laughs> most of the time. Mas é, sim, é isso. Muito obrigado e se você goste, dá um like e uh, se você tem alguma dúvida também, uh, comenta aí embaixo. Eu posso uh, colocar, uh, Iris, uh, se você tem um media, social media, alguma coisa assim, eu posso meter aqui também. E, uh, e, uh, e se você também quer aprender mandarim ou, ou inglês, uh, pode achar ela no iTalk também, né? Um ótimo professor. Uh, claro, e uh, até a próxima. Obrigado. Obrigado. Sim, muito obrigada. <risos> até. Tchau. Obrigado. Tchau. Bye, uh. bye.